What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and this is Space Engineers. I've been playing it quite a bit over the last sort of week, uh, probably more than I should have done, so I thought I'd bring a quick sort of tutorial come guide on some of the basics and some of what I've learnt, and that also might act as a decent way of you judging whether or not it's the game for you at the same time. So, what is Space Engineers firstly, before I dive in, um, and the first comparison I'm always going to draw, and everyone else will draw as well, is Minecraft, because it has that vibe to it. It is a game where you are constructing things, albeit in space, in a sort of semi-building block style fashion. Um, the graphic style in Space Engineers is a little bit different to Minecraft, but overall it has a very similar vibe to that. But let's dive straight in and have a look at what the game is all about and how you might go about playing it. So, start off with a new world. I don't really use Quick Start, so we're going to Custom World and I'll talk a little bit about some of the options here. Now, the main one in this menu and the whole thing is this creative survival choice. Uh, much like in Minecraft, you do have a choice between whether or not you're playing with the, the realistic rules and the ability to die, or whether or not you're playing with essentially a creative setup where everything builds instantly, you don't need to worry about resources, you're just clicking and exercising your creative muscles. Uh, and for the starting off, I'm actually going to start in creative just because it's somewhere where I can show you the basics of the game without needing to worry about fetching mats and all whatnot. Left hand side we have the various maps you can start on. I often start on Lone Survivor as it's a sort of fairly basic start without starting like in the middle of nothing. So uh, Lone Survivor and word on some of the, a couple of the other options here. Uh, firstly, beware setting your objects, your players and the asteroid amount too high. The game can be very very resource hungry because the physics calculations in it are immense to be honest. So just beware that you need a pretty strong machine to really be playing with these anywhere up near the top and still having a good frame rate. The other things in here are environment hostility. This is a thing that I think they're trying to add to add a bit of threat in the game for survival mode, but basically it just bombards you with meteors every now and then, and they're horrible, and I don't see any purpose in it whatsoever. So it's a starting point for their survival mode and trying to add a bit of danger in. For now, I wouldn't use it. Uh, the other one is this cargo ships. Um, they're a bit overpowered in any of the modes. This just spawns random ships in the world that fly past and there's nothing stopping you from just going raiding them up for any resources you want or stealing them and crashing into things. It gets a bit dull, basically. So yeah, starting on creative, same map, and we'll kick off with the game. Yeah, my goal with this video really is just to try and... I don't know, I'm, I'm going to start off, for example, by showing you how to build a spaceship. Um, and how to, well in fact first thing I should cover really is uh, basic controls, so left hand side you can see uh, a couple of bits of information about my character currently and what my character has equipped and what he can use, so you've got jetpacks, dampeners and lights there uh, lights is L, a bit relevant but not that relevant uh, the other two are far more important, uh, first of all X is your jetpack and this will enable you using WASD, Q, E, C and space to fly around in the gravity free world that is space which is kind of cool on its own and the dampeners are something that will kind of counteract what would be a true Newtonian physics system so if I turn those off for a second and then stop holding any directions at all so I'm not doing anything and I can turn around point backwards and as you would in space I'm just voting this direction anytime your dampeners are on they will counteract that force so you can still move around but they will stop you as soon as you let go of any moving keys, or attempt to. And it's a good idea for the most part to run around with these on. Uh, the only time you might want to consider turning them off is in survival mode, where you have power, energy, and as you can see down in the uh, bottom left, or uh, when you're messing around, basically. So, let's start off by doing a bit of a demonstration on building. So. As you can see, we've started on this platform. You have a quick bar at the bottom, and the kind of the most important key in creative mode at all is G. And this will bring up essentially the selection of what blocks and what you can build. And all of this is context sensitive based on what you're building. So you have these three options on the right, and this is how you'll start any sort of new project essentially with a small ship, a large ship, or a station. And when, by mousing over these, you can see on the left hand side there that depending on which one I'm going to choose, they're going to cost different mats, and they're actually going to be a different size as well. So the easiest demonstration of this is just with this block. You can see the size of that. If I go in here, start a small ship, and anything starts with one of these landing feet because it will attach it to the platform and that way it doesn't float off in space and that's kind of handy. If I attach it there, on the ground, massive. On the pole, small. So 
We're just gonna start building a ship here. It's not gonna be a very big one because I'm just gonna demonstrate kind of the basics of what you need in a ship. And that will essentially be it. So we're just gonna start off. I'm gonna build a, a basic frame. You build this how you want. The uh, end deal is the bits I'm gonna stick onto this. So one of the most important parts, let's grab them out of here, is a cockpit. And you'll see that this one here is the only one that will work on a small ship, which is what we're building. These other two are for large only, and all of these parts are either limited or will work on both. Most of them work on both. There's a few bits that are limited to certain types of ship. We're gonna need, well, we're gonna need everything we've got down there except for, we're gonna replace that cockpit with this because it works on a small ship. We're gonna keep the rest and we're gonna take light armor slope and a light armor corner so we can dress it up and make it look pretty. Uh, so, but with our basic frame, the main components of any ship, and every ship needs to have all of these pretty much, unless it's doing something particularly special, is you want a cockpit. Then, in order to obviously move around and have some control over your ship, you're going to want thrusters pointing in all the directions. And as I'm placing these, you've noticed I've got a new UI up on the top right hand side. And this is how you are going to sort of rotate and orientate the things you're pressing. And you're going to get, it's quite complex to begin with and it's confusing and you're just going to end up mashing the buttons and trying to find the one that works. And then as you get used to it, you're going to get more of a hang of just finding where you want it to be. The only thing you've got to take into account is it is context sensitive depending on where you're looking from. So my, my advice would be always try and look at it from right angles, wherever possible. Uh, it will make that whole thing much more intuitive. So we're just going to try and stick on some engines here. So we need an up engine on the front and the back. And the idea is simply to try and get engines that are covering all the various axes. So now we need an up, down, we need a left, right, and we need a back, forward. Of course, without these, uh, you would find it very, very difficult to stop. Uh, and generally stopping is considered a good thing to do. When one of these ships collides into something else, it does make a big mess. Uh, it's happened. It's not fun when it does. So build your ships with all the engines they need on them, please. Small piece of advice. <laughs> okay, so basic engine structure is done. Everything pointing in every direction, essentially. So we've got all of the bases covered. Next thing you need with any ship is gyroscopes and what these enable you to do is essentially stabilize the ship they'll, they'll give you some degree of control and movement over whatever they're attached to without engines on it at all but they're also there to give you <coughs> excuse me they're also there to give you control over your ship so without these the ship will be very 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 unstable and potentially won't turn properly at all so we're gonna have a couple of those and often you need more than just one gyroscope on a ship, you know, the bigger they get, the more of these you're going to think about putting on, or the more manoeuvrable you want it, the more of those you're going to think about putting on. And then finally, we're going to jump in with a reactor. So this will power up our ship, and that is the final component. So as you can see, as we're playing in creative mode, so no fuel or anything is required, our ship is finished. We can right-click to remove the landing foot, and there we go. Absolute most basic ship, and as you can see, functions and flies around yeah, kind of alright I wouldn't say it's great but those are the basic components and all of your ships are going to be based off that sort of same basic idea engines in all directions gyroscopes reactors and a cockpit but then what you choose to do with them is kind of down to you so in order to demonstrate that I'm actually going to jump out of creative mode because in my opinion yeah, while creative mode is fun I've always had the most fun in games like this and in Minecraft where you're playing in the survival mode where you've got a goal you've got a mind for your resources and there's some sort of driving force behind why you're doing what you're doing so let's jump back to the main menu no need to save that as that is purely a little test bed and I'm going to load up the multiplayer survival server that, uh, or the multiplayer survival save that me and a few friends have been playing on. And this is kind of why I've come to make the Space Engineers video now, is because they've introduced multiplayer and survival very recently and they're really starting to flesh it out slowly. Obviously the game is still in an alpha stage, so there's a lot more to come. But what there is there currently is really solid and, to be honest, there's a remarkable amount you can do with what's already in the game. One problem, and this is a nice demonstration of 
what I talked about earlier in the menu. This is a very big map with a lot of asteroids and quite a lot of complex systems on it. And so it loads slowly and when I get in there it's not going to run very well because I'm recording and I know for a fact Space Engineers does not really like that very much. So here we are in our survival world. Uh, and I said uh, this has been a sort of project of me and a few friends mostly over the last weekend. We started a new world on Thursday last week I think. And yeah, one difference you'll hopefully notice immediately is on my bar I have some tools. These are at the top of the G screen here uh, and hopefully self-explanatory but yeah welders for putting stuff together, grinders for taking stuff apart and drills for mining. And mining is important because everything you're going to do in this version of uh, the game is going to be requiring resources and time to build. So let's start off just by demonstrating that. Everything starts and works in the same way as far as construction is concerned but when I build my small ship and I place down this foot you'll notice that it's not actually finished. It needs more components to be finished off. Now one thing, and as a tip for how you can sort of speed up and make more efficient your building in survival mode, because if you look down in the bottom left hand side, you'll see my energy meter is now dropping down and so is my, and my health is not at 100%. Both of those are con sort of concerns now you're in survival mode. Is if I click on this now, I'm actually gonna hopefully add a motor to it without building it. Oh no, I've got, I don't have a motor, so let's go and grab one to demonstrate. I just want a motor. Now one thing you can do, this is the inventory. I've accessed it on our cargo system by pressing K. And it's got all of our various materials in it. And you, this is going to be a whole lot more important now you're in survival mode rather than in creative. And I can move stacks of stuff into it, into my backpack just by dragging. Uh, but I can also click Control to move 10. Or I can click Shift to move 100. Or most importantly, and we didn't find this out until very recently, I can right click and drag it over and it will actually let me select how many. So I'm just going to take one for demonstration purposes. And when I click on this, it's going to add it to it without building it. And by this method, let's grab some steel plates, which I know this needs. By this method, you can, in survival at least, build the frame of your ship without having to commit to the design and actually go through and build it and build all the mats for it. All the various components you build will only actually require the very first mat in the list on the right hand side. So this light here has got a whole bunch of different materials that it needs to make. But I'm going to be able to place it still because I've got that steel plate. So yeah, that's sort of the same gist as in creative mode except there are some tricks to how best to sort of make your building efficient and then from here all I need to do to build this stuff is just weld it and you'll sit here and you'll weld everything. So everything we've done in here has been welded like this and yes it does take a little while. The other thing that everything else has happened in here is we've had to go and mine materials in order to do everything. So starting off with what you do with those materials we have a refinery here and we have an assembler tucked under here and what these will do is refinery will take our raw ore that we're mining and it will convert it into ingots. The assembly, as you might expect, will then take the ingots and convert it into the parts we need. And all of this is managed through this production window. So you can see here we've got our assemblers and we have multiple because we uh, needed quite a lot of parts for a recent project so we scaled up our production. And if I was to click on something on this left hand side it would order it into the production queue and it would appear in the inventory. Now, one of the things they've added, <coughs> excuse me, one of the things they've added recently that we have kind of brought us back to the game a bit is this whole system we've got kicking around down here, which are tubes, conveyors, and connectors and collectors. And they are unfortunately named, they do two completely opposite things and sound exactly the same. And I'm really hoping they change that. But anyway, the end result of this is we can link everything we have together now. And without needing to manually move things around, I can go in here and you can see I've got, this is the cargo container I've accessed. But I've also got in the list everything else that it's connected to. And if I want to, I can take this stone from the large cargo container that's sitting underneath the platform. Or, more importantly, if I go into production, I can see that I don't actually have the materials to build everything. Let's find something that's not already well loaded up. So here we go. I don't have the materials to build everything in here, but I want some motors. So I'm going to click the motors and it's not going to behave itself. Unfortunately this is a, a work in progress system so let's try it with something else. Nope. Dang it. 
it's now taken, it took, it took a little while there, but basically I ordered the bulletproof glass and it went and fetched the materials it needs using our conveyor system from our containers. Now by combining these with what we have sitting up here, the collectors and the connectors, which basically this thing here, the collector, will suck in anything that's thrown at it, pointed at it, whatever you want to call it. So if I was to drop my steel plate, it's going to drop, it's going to hit those, and it's going to disappear, and it's now in the inventory system. Under here, the connector pretty much does the exact opposite. It'll throw out anything you put in it, and if you put lots of stuff in it, it'll throw out lots of stuff. And if you connect it up to the whole system, and there's a little toggle that you can change, it will throw out everything in the system. So by a combination of that and the necessities you have, you end up sort of coming up with various crafts to solve your problems. So here are some examples of some of the stuff we've built. Mining craft, cargo craft that sucks in at one end and sprays out at the other. So you know you can use it to transport anything between anything, pretty much. Or even down here, a room for dismantling chips in, that we can just drop the parts on the floor and they will be sucked into our cargo system, which is all contained underneath. And I don't know, there's not a huge amount more to say really, you can experiment with large ships and, and stations, they essentially work in the same way except everything's bigger and costs more materials, so this here is a station and these blocks as you can see are essentially 25 small blocks worth of materials. There's also, if you really start getting advanced, and my plan is eventually to come out with a uh, more advanced video if people have enjoyed this, found this helpful, you know, this was only ever supposed to be a reasonably basic tutorial. Funky, funky things you can do with gravity. So this room, for example, relies on gravity to do what it does. If I uh, turn my jetpack off, you can see the gravity in here, as demonstrated in the bottom right hand side of the screen, is all a bit wonky. And that's so that when I cut parts off the ship, they drop and fall into the collector system, rather than just falling on the floor. Another thing you can do, which is part of this automated mining rig over here, is use other things called rotors, which basically give you a pivot point. So that there, that part will pivot on the base. This part, this arm has a rotor in there, and that pivots on there, and what you end up with is an automated mining rig that spins around in circles on its own, and the arm puts gentle pressure downwards. So with sort of a combination of all these various bits, landing feet, for example, can be used to uh, carry stuff around as well, or attached to things you can come up with some really clever ideas and given how early on in the game this is I think it's very very hopeful that by the end there's also going to be some really complex systems and really cool things you can do oh, my friend's ship is not finished yeah. um, so I'm, I'm hopeful what that is I'm not sure there's a huge amount more I, I should really say in this video this is some sort of nice basic there you go that's how you build a ship here's some things you can do with it uh, survival mode I would recommend you give it a go Obviously here you're going to need to be digging big holes in asteroids, initially with the pick you start off with, and then eventually you're going to build a succession of vehicles in order to do it better for you, and then a succession of things to move that ore around and process it. But overall, there's a huge amount of fun to be had, and if you go and have a look at YouTube, this is a very basic thing. If this looks like the game for you, type space engineers into YouTube and see some of the wacky and amazing stuff people have come up with, because it, it truly is crazy once you start getting, admittedly mostly in creative mode, but once you start really getting into it and coming up with some, some cool ideas. Otherwise, I hope you found this helpful. I found this game worryingly addictive. Um, if it had a box, it should have one of the smoking stickers on the front that says, Space Engineers is highly addictive, do not start. But that's just me. I, I was quite addicted to Minecraft as well when it first came out, so maybe I'm that sort of person. If you've enjoyed this video, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Click the like, click the subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And otherwise, I hope you take a look at Space Engineers, and I will see you next time.